Okay, welcome to the Thursday, May 12th, 2022, 10-1 Board of Supervisors meeting. This is being recorded. And uh, this is James Allison. I will go ahead and do a roll call. Uh, roll call to see who's here. Annalisa Kohler. Present. Jeff Noodleman. Here. And James Allison is present. That's three of five. Claudio Campuzano and PJ Christopher could not make it today. Any public comment? Do not see anyone from the public here. Okay, in that case, let's move on to, um, actually, I apologize. I need to say hello and welcome <laughs> to everyone from being here. I'm still learning to be a normal human being, um, but I'm getting there. Uh, good to see everyone today. So item C, capital improvement plan. Bill, do you want to take it from here? I would, yes, thank you, and good morning. Um, hopefully um, you received the draft CIP uh, in your meeting packet today, uh, or meeting packet last week when uh, Wendy sent that out. Um, there are a lot of pieces in there that'll look familiar to you. Uh, if you've seen, uh, if you reference uh, previous CIPs that uh, um, helped draft over the last several years. So, um, I'll kind of scan through those relatively quickly and, and highlight those pieces that are different from your approved CIP from last June, June 2021. So I'm gonna share my screen to help um, facilitate this. Wendy, can you- Let me give you that privilege, Bill. Thank you. You should have it now, thanks. All right, thanks. So let me know when you all can see that. Thumbs up, all right. Okay. So, um, right, so the, the CIP is structured, uh, the draft CIP is structured similarly um, from years past. Um, in the executive summary, I'll note that um, we have some pretty big dollar amounts this year relative to past years. Um, the five-year CIP is just under $30 million, which is a pretty healthy amount of money uh, relative to what we normally are, are talking about. Um, first year amount is 1.5 million um, for uh, next fiscal year. And that's in concert with, uh, with Ben's budget proposal we had, um, we had talked about last month. The next couple of sections are similar as what you've seen in past, overview of the district, um, how we go about, can, um, conducting our uh, process to identify capital projects and score them and then ultimately rank them. There's a series of criteria that we use um, with weights, including flood risk, emergency preparedness, um, operational efficiency and safety, as well as asset integrity and dependability. In addition to that, we have several other value added criteria we um, recognize and um, are, are beneficial for the, for the community. And so we um, uh, make a note that uh, if any particular project helps any of these categories, we recognize that um, as well. There's, uh, there's not a lot of analysis per se, but it's more of a, a checkbox that it does provide some um, value to the, to the project. And the combination of the two will help us prioritize that project uh, among relative to each other. One new piece here that I want to, to stop on briefly is um, a section called cost estimates. And in here, there's a table that explains um, what uh, we're, um, uh, we're proposing to include this year in the, in the CIP package. This information is something that um, cost estimators and others um, a version of this at least, um, used fairly regularly um, and helps provide um, the uh, recipients of cost estimates um, some idea of the confidence of that particular project's cost that you see. So normally you see a single number um, for a project, 
but most times there are, there's there's accuracy accuracy bars around there. So it can be plus or minus five percent. Some cases plus or minus a hundred percent, depending on what you're talking about, right? So um, in our case, um, we see um, I, I try to craft this table. To, based upon um, some um, best management practices in, the, in our industry and apply them to what the drainage district does and um, added some example applications in, um, in each of these. So um, I offer this type of information, which gets a little bit into the weeds, but um, the intent here is to give um, board members some sense of idea of how well staff feel um, about these cost estimates. Um, so and my intent here is to um, identify projects that have a little tighter cost estimate range um, in for uh, situations where you need to improve in a budget. So class three project estimates, cost estimates, uh, I'm, my goal is to have um, any project that comes before you uh, have at least a class three level of accuracy for budget authorization for that year. Um, and then class two and one will be um, even tighter ranges and ideally class one would be a situation, for example, where um, you would be able to confidently approve a construction contract that's pretty, uh, that has, should have a really tight um, estimate because we know what the contractor is going to give us for our, our cost. So, but in other cases, on the opposite end, you, we do planning level um, analyses and um, master plans are an example of those types of work. Um, but those uh, estimates that come out of there are more coarse um, because we just haven't had a chance to really dig into the projects. Um, and we're using some other heuristics about how to develop what those costs are. So those type of projects, my intent is to have those projects further out into the CIP years four, three, four, five, maybe beyond. Um, and then as it gets closer, um, my intent is to um, propose that um, the district um, go through a pre-design phase so we can get to a 30% milestone and a class three cost estimate before um, a, your board approves uh, a, a budget for final design and construction. So um, that's the uh, a, a, a quick summary of the information in here. Um, if you look in the uh, and Appendix A, where you have some of the details of those um, of those costs and for, per project, you'll see references to class numbers, and you would have to come back to this page to understand what that class number represents. So this is new, um, and I wanted to. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, that certainly my intent is to give you a little more information to understand how our staff feel about um, the, bud the budget numbers that we're, uh, we're offering for the next year and then in the years and the out years. So getting into the, the CIP itself, um, we, uh, for next year, um, we have that $1.5 million number um, and um, it will include a continuation of safety improvements for um, a lot of the areas we do in our drainage system. Um, and the next, and then two possible projects moving forward here. Um, and so one would, um, sorry, um, let me finish the, the second bullet. Um, we need a, a couple months in the summertime uh, to finish up the drainage master plan um, for drainage and water quality master plan, excuse me, for pen one. Um, I just reviewed. The, deep, uh, the a draft of that report, I know uh, McKenna is gonna be coming to you um, soon to give you an overview of that, but there'll be some uh, final um, touch up work in the summer months. So we'll need approximately $10,000 to complete that work. And that amount is already accounted for in our IGA with the, the city of Portland. So there's no additional cost coming out of Penn One's um, budget, uh, uh, resources there. 
but uh, the third bullet up here uh, refers to PIR pump station improvements. Um, and there are two avenues that we are, uh, are considering. Um, as you know, um, we have temporarily stopped the, um, the pump station structural rehab projects um, for, because we have submitted an application thanks to James's work um, through FEMA um, uh, to pay for a the design of a replacement for the PIR pump station. And staff felt that if the design work can continue as um, if we, the grant is awarded and the design work can continue and we can get into construction, the structural rehab work doesn't, um, doesn't need to happen. However, if the grant is not approved, um, we have something in the CIP as an, as an alternative fee, which is the structural rehab work. So um, the budget numbers uh, may look a little inflated because we have two options there. But we wanted to make sure that um, you know which direct what the cost impacts of going um, one direction or, or another. And certainly, if we, once we we know the fate of the grants, we we will need to spend money on the other option. So, looking beyond the first year, um, we have other work going on that in the five-year outlook, um, and um, the the big pieces. Uh, ones I've already noted, the, certainly the, the pump station replacement project is going to be uh, uh, quite a bit of money, $15 million uh, from what we're estimating, which is even is higher than what the PMLS contribution is during this, this time, in part because the PML, PMLS work um, is, will have just started construction during this five-year window. Um, there's more to come uh, after, in years six through 10. So the pages four and five of the, um, the CIP report um, outlines what those changes are from previous years and what we're looking at looking forward. Um, coming up um, with an escalation cost moving forward is like looking in a crystal ball like it is any year, but this year is really tough because um, I'm sure as you all know from your own work, the construction costs can, can uh, skyrocket and, and be a roller coaster here. So um, we've assumed a 7% escalation factor for each of the next five years and then dropping back down to a longer term average of 4% in years six through 10. So those definitely influence the, uh, the cost that you see in Appendix A. And let me scroll down to there. Sorry, I think anyone seasick. Um, so in Appendix A, um, you see the typical information, the projects, the um, description, the project number, the CIP rank. Um, here's the, cl the, the class number for each of the projects. I've added another column this year based on input from um, Keith and Ben to um, comment on ex any external funding connected to that project. So you, you have a, a, a snapshot of, of uh, which projects um, do have that type of funding, which do not. Um, and then typical um, numbers for years uh, one through five and beyond. And Appendix B uh, references um, individual projects that are in years one through five and are, are typical one pagers that you may have seen in the past. So that's what I have to offer this morning, um, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions and hopefully um, you have enough information um, you provide enough information or questions for me, I can make any type of adjustments that you feel are appropriate and come with to you in June with a, a polished um, CIP package that uh, you feel comfortable um, taking a vote on to potentially approve. So put my hand up. I just wanted to see if first, if any of the other board members have questions about the presentation in the um, capital budget and capital plan. Like Jeff does as well. Um, I really have comments more than anything. So um, this 
it looks a lot like it has in the past. Um, so a great job with that. Um, interesting to see things start to ramp up with the pump station and the uh, PMLS projects. I really appreciate the um, notation of the class of estimate. Um, for a variety, just in general, I think that's a good practice. And with the inflation, inflationary factors that we're all seeing with um, design and construction, uh, public works, I should say. Um, so kudos to you on that. Two quick questions, or they're kind of the same questions. At what point would it be, um, would be, at what point would be a good milestone for the board to get an update on what's coming out of the drainage master plan and the, um, the, the, the BES and, and Metro, I think it's mostly BES and Metro outfall decommissioning work happening on the north end of the district? Right. Um, maybe I see McKenna Bell's name uh, in the list here of participants. Maybe she can comment on the drainage master plan first. Yeah, sure. Um, I was going to give an update, I think, during the next agenda item, but um, I'm planning to, to come back at the July format, I think, is going to be the timing um, to go over the findings of the plan. So we are um, in the home stretch, finally, we received the draft final plan the first week of May from Parametrics. So we're kind of doing final review right now with MCD staff and then other stakeholders, including um, BES and Parks and Metro and the port. Um, and yeah, the schedule's been delayed slightly, mainly just because of the significant need in this um, drainage district to just in involve the stakeholders and make sure we get everyone's input and feedback. Um, we're still planning to have the plan done by the end of the fiscal year, but just based on um, the timing of the board meetings, um, the July format is what will make sense to bring that to you. And then um, probably the August one will be um, asking you to adopt it via resolution as long as we resolve any comments or concerns. Great, thank you, really appreciate that. That's, uh, that's great news. and. Um, I think it's not premature to say thank you, and uh, we look forward to seeing the uh, results. Thanks for that update. As regards to the um, the BES capital project out uh, off Marine Drive, um, that's technically not Pen One's capital project, so it's not listed in this document. Um, but staff time certainly is being. Um, used to support uh, that project uh, with information and, and guidance as uh, as needed. So we are tracking that. Uh, we are also uh, I'll comment a little more about um, that and the, the graphic packaging work that's out there as well. A little bit later in the meeting. Jeff, do you have uh, any questions? Yeah, thanks. Uh, most of all, uh, you know, we talk about assets. Bill, you are certainly an incredible, valuable asset. And this presentation, as always, quite frankly, but but this one, and I appreciate Wendy for sending uh, material out in advance, um, just to be able to go through it in advance, but then having you really bring it to life uh, is, is the the double punch that for all of us board members uh, is incredibly helpful. So thank thanks for that. Uh, I really appreciate, you know, for those of us old timers, um, the step process, because as you recall, and I speculating, but I believe it was like Mark Wigan in days, or maybe even prior, that um, we, we as a board really, because you're the expert, and, you know, we sit here, we hear these things, and, you know, fall risks, and safety, and flood, et cetera, but you're more, you know, you know pardon the pun, you know, boots on the ground there. And so we look to you, say, tell us really what's going on here. So my, my comment is this, that when you have these steps and you identify you know, flood risk, emergency, pre emergency preparedness, what, if anything, Bill, have you noticed over the last years that we have traditionally kicked down kick the can down the road and we have to stop kicking. You know, I can think of, you know, SCADA, the, the communication system, 
I know we, and we've come up with reasons to do it. Well, everybody's not on the same system. So why would we change? And then, yeah. So I, I, I'm just curious from your standpoint, standpoint from the district, what must we stop kicking down the road to really make ourselves better you know, going forward? Because the goal is always going forward, not looking back. So that, that, that's the one thing I wanna speak to or have you speak to. And then the second question, and maybe this is more for Jim and, and others, is that once you polish it, as you say, and, you know, we have you know, the, the key critical components, you know, where's the money coming from? I mean, I, I as a representing a property owner out there, and also as, you know, we all have dual hats on, uh, you know, first and foremost is to ensure that the district does what it's supposed to do. We have a mission, we have a statutory charge, granted things are changing, I get that. But, but as we sit here and live and breathe today, you know, we kind of understand what it is that we're supposed to be doing. Um, but we have all these incredible things at now increasingly incredible costs. And I've used the term before and I apologize, you know, we can't go out and have a bake sale. So it kind of goes to the first question, which bill are these things that we just have got to do? And then Jim and team, where's the money gonna come from? Yeah, let me start uh, to, to answer the first question and Jim can, can add on. Um, there are two things that um, that rose to the top quickly when I first started the district. One was staff safety, and one was the PIR pump station. So, and I guess the third would be the, uh, the railroad embankments um, because of the, you know, the of Vampark flood. So those three things um, are or the top of my uh, list. Um, and I appreciate the board's willingness to spend its very limited resources on staff safety. There wasn't a lot um, uh, to do out here. We were able to uh, supplement some of that money with some money from our partners, from the city and eventually the port. Um, so that's moving forward. Um, we, because of limited resources, we've had to kick the, the PIR pump station improvements down the road. Um, and um, that's a little distressing because I was concerned that uh, partly for staff safety and I was partly concerned about flood risk if uh, the thing failed. Um, but, uh, and we, um, but I understood the situation. And so what we tried to do is um, do even little things like um, keep um, track of how much the pump station sank <laughs> or uh, adjust or change a little bit. So we, uh, we were, we've been monitoring the pump stations um, um, building um, with, within the resources we have available. So I am very um, happy that we've been, the city's been able to step up to help us um, fund the structural rehab work. That would be a, an awesome, um, uh, improvements to uh, make staff feel a little more uh, grounded, if you will, I mean, literally, um, to uh, step into that facility. And uh, I remember uh, <laughs> we had contractors come out there to do some testing on the pumps. And um, we uh, we walked in there because we're accustomed to being in that structure. And contractors looking around like, mm, should we be in here? And they turned on the pump and then they actually ran out and ran to the, to the uh, uh, catwalked over to the uh, to the levee. So um, it's that was a, a, a I, I offer that analogy is because it's it's not in the best of shape as you all know. Um, so, but we found some ways to potentially even replace the pump station, which is awesome. Um, so that's kicked down the can a little bit, um, but we have a path forward. Uh, we have a path forward to a large degree on the railroad abatement. So um, otherwise, um, your district's um, uh, drainage and levee system um, are, um, function relatively well, right? So um, there are all, there's some adjustments we have to be made that you've heard about from presentations from PMLS, but, and we have a plan now to deal with the pump station, which I am 
certainly thankful for. Um, I know um, in f folks from like even Dave Hendricks days, uh, they've had challenges to try to, to make improvements there. And I think we're finally in a position to do something. So thanks to y'all's leadership and um, our ability to with our partners, uh, I think uh, that thing is gonna be replaced before I retire. So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, so yeah, so I'll start there. And uh, Jim, do you wanna comment on that or, or, or uh, Jeff's next question? Yeah. And I want call and go too, but I guess since our port representative isn't here today, I think the port should probably pick up most of the capital costs. I think that's going to be the most efficacious way for us to go. Um, all joking aside, you know, that's really the purpose of the urban district and the partnership with the Corps of Engineers through the Portland Metro Levy study and, and project. And um, we have the Business Oregon grants that we hope will uh, emerge and get approved in July and August. That will give us our first local match for the design work for the major portion of the capital. We've got the FEMA grant for the pump station work, and then the new revenue development project that Colin and others are leading with the urban district is designed to try and generate both capital revenue through a general obligation bond on all of urban Multnomah County, and uh, potentially we are investigating the use of a service fee or an account fee for all those households and businesses to supplement the amazing contributions from our friends in the floodplain. All of that is a work in progress, uh, but I feel confident that we will receive a pretty significant amount of funding from people who currently are not involved in that. Um, so that is the big picture plan. Colin, do you wanna supplement that? Only supplements to that, so I think that's, um overall funding strategy um, is that there's a much larger um, base for who it would be contributing to these funds uh, based on the benefits that are received throughout the whole region um, and that general obligation bond and uh, strategy that goes beyond just a sort of single um, infusion and modernization but also looking at strategies 20 plus years out um, looking at revenue bonds and other ways to kind of continue uh, to supplement that funding. Um, the overall operating uh, revenue is also going to be bolstered um, by um, new new revenue sources, uh, as well as an expanded geography. I also want to just note that um, the PMLS piece is really huge. The uh, as that moves forward, that has federal investment of about 65% of the overall project. So bringing in those federal funds. And then the one other piece that we're pursuing, and uh, you guys are, are all aware um, that we have been um, pursuing different grants, especially through Business Oregon, uh, but we're also identifying other grants, both at the federal level and also at the uh, state and, and through NGOs, private um, investment groups like Pew Charitable Trust. Um, a, a strategy to supplement uh, projects, especially some things that um, are kind of plus ups on our core mission areas that have really good uh, grant fund sources. So as we have more capacity, um, as we move towards the new district, we'll also be tapping into some of those uh, funding sources. Thanks, several. Fantastic. Thank you. And I guess I feel obligated to share, and, and Jeff, I know you know this, but the city of Portland, Metro, and the port continue to uh, use their general funds and other appropriations to support our program, recognizing that there's so few of you private landowners and the zoning and other issues associated with the landscape in that district require uh, that additional public contribution. So we're grateful for the ongoing support from those three agencies and uh, should not go without acknowledgement. I think um, I just want to comment quickly, Colin, I really appreciate you saying multiple times strategy and strategic. I, I feel like as we've looked at the uh, liabilities, the projects on the capital side, the staff have um, always, but particularly, particularly over the last few years, tried to have a strategy that could seek or find a fund source related to the needed um, the asset need. And we've done that through um, our budget, through our partners. And although, you know, Jeff, your question's a good one, looking ahead, we have these huge liabilities. It seems to me, and that maybe this gets at your original question, it seems as though, you know, we approve a capital budget once a year. We have, we have to approve that budget. We have a, we have a 
uh, CIP forecast for five and ten years, but it's the it's the approval of that budget that has to have the revenues behind it uh, for us to, to engage in that work in the coming year. Um, the, the million dollar question, to, I think, to Bill is, um, am I wrong in seeing in looking at the the capital budget for this next year and say we're not kicking the can down the road. We are covering those things that are are not just the most critical. We're not leaving things that are um, of moderate priority um, unattended to uh, without consideration. Yeah, I would agree with that, James. Uh, I think we've caught up with the can that uh, we've moved a little bit and uh, we're in a great position to uh, um, to move forward on things that I think are super important and uh, I'm glad we're, we have the funding to support that. Yeah, so aside from the entire Western side of your system and your major pump station, everything's great. It's worth noting too that one of the other projects that uh, you know Keith is really helping with uh, and then is really trying to streamline some of the administrative overhead that the current system creates um, for good reason, um, but we, we see some opportunities to reduce some of the administrative costs so that we can save some of those and reinvest them back into uh, what I would argue are more public service oriented common good related investments. So some yeah. more, more on that at your format. So I, I'll also note that because you're in a really good position to start doing some design and construction work, both on the drainage and the levy side with uh, the FEMA grants, quote, fingers crossed, um, and the PMLS work, we can start looking at more nuanced things um, about how we manage the watershed here. And um, since we have a, in a, in a, in several, in a couple of years out here, a lot of the major assets are gonna be in good um, working order because they'll be brand new. Um, and we can start, we, uh, you have positioned yourselves well to hand off this district to the new urban district for them to begin looking at um, the, the other mission statements that, that they will have to tackle and not necessarily have to be anchored by um, having to deal with uh, major infrastructure updates. So I, I think that's something you can uh, be proud of. Great, well, thank you. Uh, with that, are we ready to move on to item D, the operations and engineering update? I can do that. Um, is there, um, I'm sorry, Wendy, um, do we want to talk about the the letter first or, or I can, oh, I can just can jump put right it on in. the agenda. I'm, I, there's just um, 25 more minutes. And so it's really at the board's discretion as to what they'd like to prioritize. If you'd like to talk about it, Bill, go, go ahead and talk about the, the interstate letter. Okay, um, I don't have, an, I think it was included in your packet, but the long and short of it is that we've been engaged with the, the project team for the interstate bridge project, replacement projects, and we've informed them of the types of topics or issues that uh, we're gonna be looking at once it get their work evolves to a point of, of submitting some design documents for us to review. It's not only gonna be about the existing system, but also um, improvements that we're looking forward to um, regarding like the I-5 off-ramp um, onto Marine Drive. There's a levy improvement that needs to be there for your Pen 1, Pen 2 cross levy, uh, as well as the levy system underneath I-5. So there's a connection to the PMLS work as well as a standard um, development review criteria that we'll be applying even for that very large project. So um, know that we are engaged with them um, very early. And so um, they, they are aware of what we're gonna be doing there. So and they have that in writing now. Um, I can do a very brief uh, uh, engineering ops update. Um, I'll comment about the uh, work along Marine Drive. Um, the, um, uh, there is still coordination going on with uh, BES's capital project to improve the outfalls um, there along there that the, um, the 
um, the cores of rip inspections had identified that needs improvement. Um, so that is happening. Uh, I know a little bit more about the graphic packaging um, uh, outfall as well. It's a similar type of improvement that the, the rip inspections required. And um, I know graphic packaging has engaged with consultants to uh, to make it to identify what type of design um, to replace that or address the sinkhole that's right next to the levee uh, flood wall. So. Um, it looks like they're actually going to get rid of the structure that's on the riverward side where the, um, the bike path is um, and just uh, and just replace the piece of pipe that's going to be underneath there. But in doing so, they'll be able to backfill the area where that created the sinkhole. So that's moving forward and we've been meeting with the consultants about that. So um, that's a good sign that, uh, that the consultants engaged because graphic packages and paying them to, to do that work. Um, we also have had one, uh, we've had a little bit of work dealing with houselessness in this area. Um, the port has seen some campers in the Vanport wetland, um, but we also noticed that there were some campers um, with help some um, uh, members in the public giving us a heads up, um, some campers on the riverward side of the flood wall. Um, just so that's uh, just off Marine Drive. We've uh, ended up uh, towing a couple of abandoned vehicles there. Uh, and the next step is what to do about the, um, the um, debris that was left over. Uh, my understanding is there's no one's actively camping there, but there's still a fair amount of, uh, uh, of, uh, of debris there. So, um, so we're working on that. Um, our operations team just made some improvements to um, make sure that the out the levee tow drains um, are clearly visible and functioning properly and uh, now covered so um, animals don't um, crawl back up into the the, the uh, pipes and make a new nest. Um, but um, so we're, uh, we're we not only have uh, identified and, and excavated around there and. and uh, restored the uh, the ground around those outfalls, but we're also uh, looking at how to make some further improvements um, so um, it doesn't get covered over by vegetation as quickly as we have seen in the last couple of years. Um, the final thing I'll note is that the University of Portland um, engineering um, program uh, has, this is the undergraduate program, they have a capstone project that their engineers go through each year as a senior year project. Um, this year they focused on the Vanport wetland pump station uh, and uh, found uh, and, and concluded with a, uh, a, a, a preliminary design and cost estimate of how to uh, replace that pump station. And um, so that final presentation occurred uh, late in April. Um, and they came up with a, a cost of about a million dollars to do that work. Um, it's a great start uh, and there'll be a lot of information in there. Uh, the, the drainage master plan also has done an estimate for the, uh, of that pump station replacement and the costs were, uh, were a bit higher. That I kind of have to correct me, but I think it was somewhere in the vicinity of uh, either two and a half to four million. So it's quite a bit larger than what's um, undergraduate students came up with, but um, their research certainly um, will be helpful for us once we do um, um, get uh, to the point of actually doing that design work. So I'm grateful for their time. And uh, I think it's great for us to um, get a little more exposure to uh, those students so they know who we are and we have a better opportunity for uh, recruitment in the future um, for, uh, for any vacancies on an engineering team. That's what I have for the updates. Is there, McKenna, is there anything else you wanted to add regarding the drainage master plan? Before she speaks, I want to acknowledge in terms of engineering capacity, uh, we now have a new licensed engineer on our team and it is McKenna. Congratulations, McKenna. And we're really excited for you. And uh, it's really great to have that certification for you, helping us do all of our capital projects, particularly on the environmental side. So thank you for pursuing that. Good job. Um, I don't think I have anything else about the drainage master plan unless there are any questions. So you can expect to see that in July.
Okay, thank you. Any other questions about operations and engineering? Okay, let's move on to item E, the executive director report. Jim? Yeah, I'll be really brief. Um, back to funding again. Um, Evan, who has left the call, has done great work pulling together a polling instrument, and we've got our final draft. So that should go into the field here in the next week or so. It's being sponsored by the Urban District. Uh, it won't give us everything we need to go to the voters, but it's going to be a really good foundation for us to understand where the public stands on funding our enterprise and how we can start talking about it uh, effectively. So we're really excited to get that moving. And I want to thank Evan for all her hard work to make it happen. Um, and then I guess the other reports that I want to share with you really center around uh, our employees. And I know you guys uh, contract with MCDD, but they're the reason we exist. And uh, we have made some progress on some of the safety vaults for the crew, which we're really excited about. And they really deserve that. Uh, we are nearing completion of a pay equity study, and we recently got some comparable position data from external vendors. And uh, the good news is we're, we're not radically off what the, the professionals say the market is. And we're seeing some evidence of that in real life uh, through some recruitments that we are currently involved in and some job offers that we've recently successfully offered. We have hired a new person to fill Brian Eberhardt's position and uh, we got a counter offer and we were able to come up with a package that was uh, successful. So we have a, a pretty good experienced person joining our team soon. Uh, we have uh, accepted offer or an informally accepted offer. The offer letter just got signed while we've been meeting um, for a new office coordinator. Emily has been helping with the transition to the urban. It's actually been carrying probably two and a half jobs at least, more like three. Um, so we're excited to get her some support in an office coordinator position. And we found a really good candidate who's got great public sector experience. Uh, and we are currently recruiting for an assistant finance manager to support Janet and her team. We have a lot of dissolution and revenue related items. And so we're excited to get um, that finance team another resource and that position uh, is closing or has recently closed. And we're also recruiting for uh, the regular status position that Keith is currently filling, Director of Finance and Administration. We have some qualified candidates in the pool. It doesn't quite close yet, but just on paper, it looks like we'll, uh, we'll have some people who could do the job. So uh, with that, I think I'll, uh, I'll let it go. If you have any questions for me, let me know. And I think on the urban side, I also want to give Colin a shout out and Emily. I think they've made some really great progress uh, working with our consultant team and our staff and, and Carrie's part of that to sort of help frame up how we're going to lead that urban board through the hard decisions that need to make about program and expenses and revenues. Um, but some really great progress being made there. So uh, with that, I'll be quiet and uh, answer any questions that you may have. And it looks like Wendy, you've got your hand up. So Great, thank you, Jim. Wendy? Hey, everyone. I wanted to just uh, remind you that we have a landowner meeting coming up on June 23rd, and I believe that's scheduled as a lunchtime meeting, 12 to 1.30. And um, it's my understanding that James and um, Annalise are up for re-election. So we will hope to get a quorum. <laughs> But the, the draft agenda is just, you know, a presentation of fi finances, operations, uh, houselessness, and the urban district to just um, give that broad overview. So I will make sure that that calendar invite goes out to you all. Janet, Hong, Keith, anything you want to share with the board since you've joined? Sorry, James. I, just, I noticed they're here and they're instrumental to the team and may have things we want to share. Anything else from the board? Any general comments or questions? Well, with that, folks, um, enjoy a, a beautiful day out there. And um, <laughs> as always, thank you to the staff. Thank you to the board. Thank you for being here. Folks, take care and look forward to seeing you again next time. Consider wearing a mask indoors, according to Multnomah County. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.